Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here at St. Stephen Baptist Church, Louisville, Kentucky, uh, with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the Master. Thank you for joining me again as we're looking at the book of Revelation, special book, special blessing, especially if we do three things. Remember, honor it, hear it, heed it. And God has promised that a blessing will accompany us if we do those three things. I don't know what the blessing will be. Maybe the blessing is just knowing the will of God knowing God's plan and purpose and having a peace that the seven horned lamb, which is Jesus Christ, will ultimately prevail over all that is evil and wrong in our world. Remember I said seven horned lamb. Remember seven is the number of completion and perfection. There's seven churches, seven churches. There are seven seals. There are seven trumpets. The book, the number seven is symbolic of perfection. Um, just like, for example, we have our, in our day number codes and animal codes. Remember, there are animal codes, number codes, uh, color codes. For example, if I say a color code for me, Mike, if I say, you know what, uh, I'm sorry, uh, if, but I'm, I'm, I've got the blues. Well, if you don't know what blues means in our culture, you would think that I'm literally turning blue. No, blues is a color code for I'm feeling down, I'm feeling depressed. Or if I say, uh, you know what, uh, my wife is a 10, which she is, but if I say my wife is a 10, then you know that means she looks good. 10 is a, is a, is a number for, uh, for looking good. Or um, if someone says, uh, uh, you know, the girl is a fox, well, that's an animal code. That don't mean that she's literally an animal. In fact, if I were to say in China, you know, I want you to meet somebody and she's a fox. Well, in China, fox don't mean what it means in the United States in Chinese language. You know, for us, it's an idiom, which means good looking. She's a fox. We have our codes. We just take them for granted. And if you're, you, but you have to be in the culture to understand what the code is. And uh, you had to be in the culture of John to understand what these codes are. Now, remember I told you that when you're studying the Bible, uh, you need to know who the author is, you need to know who the audience is, you need to know what the alarm is, and then you have to know what the answers are. You know what the alarm is, that there's a conflict going between the church and, and, the, and the empire, the Roman empire, because the Roman empire wants Christians to be nationalistic and advance the interests of Rome. Christians don't exist to advance the interests of Rome. Or any, any government, we exist to advance the interest of Jesus and the kingdom of God. We should be loyal to government and good citizens, but our ultimate interest is the kingdom of God, a, a kingdom where there is democracy, a world where there's democracy, the gap between the poor and the rich is closing and we study war no more. That's what we are supposed to be advancing in our world as Christians. Now, let me give you kind of an overview of the book of Revelation. This is very important. Here's an overview. The book of Revelation is divided into four sections. It's tw there are 22 chapters. And the first section is called a vision of God. In the first section, Revelation chapter one, verse one, through 20, you have a vision of God. Revelation chapter one, verses one through verse 20. That is a vision of God, all right? And then the second part is Revelation chapter two, uh, verse one through chapter three, verse 22, and you have a vision of grace. So when you divide a book, first of all, it's a vision of God, then you have a vision of grace, as we shall see. And then you have in the second part of, of the book of Revelation, you're going to have a vision of government, a vision of government. And then you're going to close with a vision of glory, the glory of God. So those four G words, I like to give you words you can remember, vision of God, vision of grace, vision of government, vision of glory. Now let's break this down. First of all, uh, a vision of God. You need a vision of God, especially when you're going through suffering. You need a vision of God. You need to know that God is still on the throne. And that's important in the book of Revelation, that God is on the throne in heaven. 
Domitian, who is the emperor, is on the throne on earth. Trump is on the throne at one time, was on the throne. He's no longer on the throne. But it doesn't matter who's on the throne in earth as long as God is on the throne in heaven. That God reigns. And this is what we learn about God, a vision of God. So John wants them, the Christians who are suffering in Asia, to see God. And this is what they need to know about God, that God is reliable. God is reliable. Look at the verse, verse five, John chapter one, verse five. It says, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful, reliable. That's what you need to know about Jesus, that regardless of what you're going through, that Jesus is, first, our word, reliable. Second, our word is the firstborn from the dead, that Jesus is resurrected. That's the second R word. It's there in first, firstborn from the dead. He got up from the grave. This is this is uh, the resurrection. All right. That the empire, the empire, the Roman Empire crucified Jesus. Crucifixion was what the Romans did to persons who they felt were a threat. Dissidents. They put you on the cross. Stoning was how Jews killed you. Crucifixion is how Romans killed you. So Jesus was lynched, crucified by the Roman government, but he was resurrected, which is to show that the Roman government could not stop Jesus and the kingdom. He's reliable. He's faithful. He is resurrected. He cannot be stopped. And not only is he resurrected and not only is he reliable, but third R word, he is ruling. Look at verse five. And the ruler of the kings of the earth. In other words, immediately, if I'm a if I am a member of the church in one of those churches in Asia, immediately I'm going to think that's what I need to hear: that Jesus is ruling. He's ruling Domitian, and Jesus is ruling whatever system of oppression is trying to keep you down. Jesus is the ruler the, of the kings of the earth. Uh, not Senator Cotton, not Mitch McConnell, uh, not uh, 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 Donald Trump. Uh, look, it's Jesus is ruling. So he's reliable. He's resurrected. He's ruling and he's redeeming. Look at verse five again. Verse five says this. Verse says, and Jesus Christ, who is faithful, reliable, uh, witness, the firstborn from the dead, resurrected, ruler of the kings. He's the ruler and he is redeeming. Who, to whom, to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood. He redeemed us. We've been covered by the blood. We've been saved. We've been brought back by the blood of Jesus Christ. So he's redeeming us. He's reliable. He's resurrected. He's ruling. He's redeeming. And then verse six says this, God is resplendent, resplendent, and made us to be a kingdom and priest to serve his God and father to him be glory and power. Now, those who are part of the empire, they would never say about Jesus, to him be glory and power. They would say about, about uh, Domitian, glory and power, that he gets all the credit and the shine and he gets, because he has all the power. But Christians are saying only Christ gets the glory. To thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Same thing Jesus told us to pray. Glory and power forever and ever and ever. Amen. Even in our day, he has all the kingdom and the power. So the book of Revelation starts off with a vision of God who is reliable, resurrected, ruling, redeeming, and resplendent. And then the second part of the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 22, is a vision of grace. There are seven churches whom John is writing to who are in Asia, and these seven churches are having to survive in a difficult society. It's like a Jew having to survive in Nazi Germany. That's how bad things are. You know, you cannot, if you're a Jew, you don't can't let people know you're a Jew because you'll, you'll be put in a concentration camp. If you are a Christian, you have to be quiet about it. And, and because of the persecution, many Christians were denying Jesus. They were denying the faith because they were more concerned about the, the perks of empire 
than devotion to Jesus and the kingdom. And John is writing these seven churches and Jesus is giving an assessment and a report card of each of the seven churches. And the seven churches are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And so to the church at Ephesus, he calls it, it's the formal church. It's the church that uh, is dignified, got, has a lot of money, but they're not on fire for Jesus as they used to, do, to be. And so uh, John writes to them, or Jesus is telling them, uh, you've, you've left your first love. Uh, you don't love me like you used to love me. That's the formal church, you know, just going through the motions, but not really dedicated. That's the church at Ephesus. Then the church at, 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 at Smyrna was the fearful church. It was a fearful church because it was afraid that it was going to lose its wealth and its power because the empire was going to take it away if it remained faithful. And Jesus says to them, you remain faithful. Then you have the faltering church. That's the church that's being drifted away and, uh, and, and it's faltering. And we can falter in the midst of persecution. And so he writes to them, that's, that's the false church that believes the wrong thing. They, they have false doctrine. That's the third church at Thyatira. Then there's the fruitless church. And the fruitless church is the church that you can't even tell that people are Christians. And then you have the church of Philadelphia, which is the feeble church. The church of Philadelphia was the poorest of the seven churches. It had nothing going for them. It was in the poorest zip code in Asia. So whatever the poorest community is, that's the church of Philadelphia. And guess which church? that is the only church that Jesus doesn't find anything wrong with, the church of Philadelphia. It's a feeble church, but it's a faithful church. It's feeble, but faithful. And Jesus applauds them and says, I set before you an open door because even though you're feeble and poor and destitute and oppressed and marginalized and redlined and discriminated against and the police are killing you with impunity, you have remained faithful to the kingdom. That's the church at Philadelphia. We need a church like the church at Philadelphia, all right? And then you have the fashionable church. That's the church at Laodicea. That's the church that had all this money and they were wealthy. But Jesus said, you're lukewarm. You're not hot, you're not cold, you're lukewarm. So it's a vision of grace. Why? Because each one of these churches, with the exception of the church of Philadelphia, should have been wiped out because they were not being faithful to Jesus. But the only reason they're not wiped out is because of the grace of God. And just like they have not been faithful to God, all Christians have not been faithful like we should have been. All of us have been, all of us have been formal and fearful and faltering and false and fruitless and fashionable. Very few of us have been like the church of Philadelphia, but yet God doesn't wipe us out because God extends to us grace, grace grace so we can do better. So we're going to look at the other two sections in the book of Revelation. Remember, it's broken down to four sections, a vision of God, a vision of grace, a vision of government, the conflict, government's the conflict between the kingdom and the empire, and then the vision of glory where God ultimately prevails, Jesus ultimately prevails, and Jesus always will prevail. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Bless your people today. Uh, help us to be like the church in Philadelphia, even though we're feeble, help us to be faithful because we have a vision of you, that you're the God that cannot be defeated, that you're the God that was killed but was resurrected and you are ruling and you're ruling over all of the kings and we celebrate your resplendency in Jesus' name, amen. God bless your hearts. Thank you so very much for being with me, another powerful point to ponder. Uh, look, if you don't have a church home, everyone needs a church home. I'd like to extend an invitation for you to become a part of the St. Stephen Church. Email us. We'll get right back with you at newstart at ssclive.org. Today, uh, of course, or later on today, uh, tonight, we will have Bible study. And I've got a special word I'd like to share with you tonight. The pre-worship experience begins at 6.30 with the brilliant most capable sister crystal goodness Spratt, and then at seven o'clock we'll have worship and then i want to share a message from the word of god with you tonight so you join us tonight god bless you look uh hope you're enjoying this series on revelation but uh and you'll join us again tomorrow but until then don't forget during COVID 19 stay safe stay sane 
And if you can, stay home. I'll see you tonight in Bible study. Take care.